Hey, hello, how are you doing? Uh, as promised, I'm here with a second video this month to make up for the fact that I didn't do one in August. Um, and I'm actually not gonna do a swatch this time. Um, a couple of months ago, I did Moon June, and I painted 30 moons in almost a month um, because I it was something that I wanted to get better at, and the best way to get better is to practice. So I practiced um, consistently. Uh, for a few weeks to try to improve my moons. I did learn a lot about painting moons, so I thought I'd do a little video um, about kind of where I ended up in my process um, for how I decided to paint moons um, through the process of painting 30 moons in 30 days. Um, so um, I will tell you kind of all the things that I learned. Um, first is that 100% cotton uh, definitely worked best uh, for this process um, because it's something um, we do in this, what I ended up liking doing is layering, but layering as the paper dried. So you didn't want your paper to dry too fast and 100% cotton is um, the best way to do that. Um, papers like the artist grade that I use a lot for my watercolor galaxy, um, the Canson um, student grade, um, that's not 100% cotton, just dries way too fast and so you can't really do this process. You want something that's going to kind of soak into the paper and hold it um, better. So uh, I liked arches the best uh, for this process. I did experiment with different papers um, through my 30 days um, and arches was the one that I liked the best so I will be using arches. Um, I have water, um, colors, you can use uh, whatever you're feeling. A couple colors that I really uh, ended up liking for mine um, was Payne's Gray by Daniel Smith, uh, which is the one that I'll use uh, today. Um, and then there's that one purplish kind of color from Daniel Smith, uh, Moon Shadow Moon something. Uh, it's like a, a grayish sort of purple. That one works out really well too. Uh, but I'm going to use uh, Payne's Gray today. And you can layer colors too. There are some really cool effects that you could do with that. Uh, I experimented a lot with adding some browns in uh, some of the layers and that uh, made it uh, look really nice too. But today I'm just going to do Payne's Gray. Um, and then I actually end up using a multitude of brushes. Um, I start out with my biggest brush, a number eight, um, and then as I get more detailed, I work my way down. So I have an eight, a four, and a two, um, and they are all round brushes uh, for that. So what we're going to do, I have my arches, paper. Um, I did a little five by five square. And then I have a tool to make a, um, a circle with. So I just found something that's circle that's about the right size of what I want to do. Um, so this is um, just a little coaster uh, that I get when I order my stickers. Um, so put that about in the middle. Take a pencil, draw a circle around it. And there, that will be my moon shape for that. Um, so I'd get my largest brush, a number eight brush. Um, and I am first going to just wet my circle all the way around. Oh, the other thing that you need is a moon reference picture. Um, if you're trying to paint an accurate moon, you need a reference picture for that. Um, so make sure that you have that, whether that be digital or real life. Um, I like having a real life just so I don't have to keep um, fussing with the screens and all that. Um, I just like to have that next to me to look at. Um, so I actually have this picture here that I love that I cut out of a magazine, I think. Uh, it's very thin. <laughs> but that is my moon reference uh, picture that I will look at to help guide where the craters are, where the color gets darker and lighter and all that stuff. Now, um, with this process also, there is a little bit of, you know, watercolor um, where you have to sort of let go like with watercolor you just kind of have to let the water and paint do what it's going to do so it won't be 100% accurate um, but that's okay that's you know it's your own style so this is so we get it wet and then we look at our moon reference photo and we say where are the um, that big crater down there it kind of goes off to the side so um where are the dark areas, where are the light areas, and then we can kind of pull colors. So um, we grab 
some of my paints gray and we say okay over here on the side there's definitely some darker colors so I lay that down and this is where we're doing the process wet on wet because the paint starts to spread and that's what we want because um, there's some softness um, to the um, different color variations uh, in the sun or in the sun in the moon um, so I'm just using my reference photo looking at it and saying okay there's a big crater around here and this darker Maria goes around here and then it's really light over in this area so I'm not gonna lay any paint down there then we have another crater right about there and another crater here and this is a process at this point you do want to work a little fast to lay down your paint um, so that you can have that spreading the wet on wet um, look um, before the paper starts to dry so we want that paint to spread around there so that looks pretty good and I'll show you my moon reference photo again in a minute so you can see how it kind of compares I'll come in and do those better craters um, so again it's not perfect there are definitely some areas where the paint spread where I didn't want it to but that is okay um, so you can kind of see there there's a lot of similarities some things that are different um, like there's a little bridge here that I didn't get comes down there are some white areas here that I missed but I will use white gouache to kind of help me with that yeah white gouache is um, one of my favorite paints it's just so useful um, so you can come in with your white wash this is very dirty so I'll get a this one a sort of whitish tint but again while it's wet I want to come in and put some of these spots in and using that white gouache oh, I'll have a little peach area that's fine um, the white gouache again we can use that wet on wet technique and you can see it's spreading out just like in the picture those craters right kind of spread out which is awesome So I did move to my number four brush um, at this point to get a little bit more detailed. All right, so now the paper is starting to dry. So we can come in and start making some of the areas darker um, that we want. Like there, this crater has sort of a it's a very dark area here so I'm gonna add more paint here to get the darkest areas really dark like this area up here is a lighter gray so we're not gonna add too much more paint in those areas um, why I moved to a smaller brush is because with smaller brushes um, you can control the amount of water that's on it a little bit better especially with a small painting like this right um, So I'm just kind of building up as we go here. Coming in with more concentrated paint to the areas that are darker. And that's not quite in the right area, but that's okay. Ooh, very concentrated on those. That area here must have been a little bit drier because it's spreading more. In these areas, it must be a little bit wetter good thing to note but yeah I just kind of keep layering paint in the darkest areas um, yeah so the reason that uh, I did um, well not really the reason I did moon June because I just thought it sounded cool 
um, but it actually lined up really nicely with the Artemis uh, launch, which was supposed to happen uh, a few weeks ago, but there were multiple issues, uh, so it did not launch. Uh, now the current launch date is set for uh, attempting at on September 27th, so that's just about in a week when at time of filming. Um, I don't know when this video will actually be posted to Patreon, but uh, that's cool. So the painting hopefully will line up nicely if you want to celebrate the Artemis landing, or not landing launch. Um, you could do a little moon painting with the help of this video. Um, Yeah, it's just kind of layering and layering and layering, adding more and more paint as we go here and using the water, right? Using the wetness to get the softness that we want. And then as it dries, getting some of those harder lines in that we see. We can start adding some of these smaller craters as we go as it dries more so we can get it to stay in those areas. But yeah, this is basically how I did the moon paintings uh, before. And it would make some nice effects here. So now my paper is definitely starting to dry. I'm definitely getting some harder edges. Um, so I can come in if I don't want hard edges yet, clean off my brush I'm kind of wet around the edges of the areas that I painted. Kind of soften things up a little bit. And then something else over here, you can see that the edge on this side is all pretty dark. So I'm going to come in and kind of give it some darkness along this edge lightly using the side of my brush so that I get kind of um, my brush is pretty dry right now, but I'm just giving it so it gets kind of a ripply effect on the side here. So it almost looks, you know, like cratery. But I want that darkness because there's shadow over here. And then sometimes I would let it dry completely and then come over and do a second wash. Um, that was another thing I experimented with. And it's something that you can experiment with too. Because there are lots of ways to paint. And maybe what works for me doesn't work for you. Yep, paper is dry so I'm softening those edges. By adding a little bit more water. I want these areas to be a little bit whiter, so I'm adding some white gouache. Yeah, white gouache is your friend, and it will, white gouache, um, for me anyway, always dries quite a bit lighter than um, what it looks like wet. So you can kind of go a little bit hard with your gouache because it will usually dry lighter. I'm 
And for these little really detailed areas, you can come in with your detail brush because there's like this line here. This to fade a little more. Now, um, I haven't really touched this area down here because it is so white, but there is some darker areas here. Um, so something I also played with, um, and I, I'm not sure that I ever really got the hang of um, how to do it, was making sections. And this is with not we want really watered down paint because it is so light. Um, so not very much paint on your thing. I'm going to dry off my brush just a smidge. I'm using my number two brush to kind of make sections away from these um, this big crater here that are kind of like pie slices that could go up and then a little bit of area in between to make those um, stri those um, streaks right those white areas and you can do this also with like a white um, pen, like a gel pen uh, afterwards too. That's another way that you can get these streaks, but um, I ended up, that always kind of stands out to me as a little harsh. So I like, I liked the way when it, when I could get this technique to work, I liked the way it looked when I could get these sort of streaks using the paint. Um, so I'm going to try that here and see if it works well. Again, not very watered down and not very wet either. So I'm drying off my brush a little bit. Um. I kind of following the curve here and then there is like a darker sort of circle in the middle here an oval because it's off to the side a little bit right so I just come in again with very light paint and make that circle there around uh, yeah so that's basically how I painted uh, the moons uh, and you can keep going with this process adding more layers and kind of getting more depth um, but it's basically that so again what you could do at this point is you know I think this looks great you could leave it just like this um, or or you could keep working it uh, if you wanted to keep kind of going or um, you could let it dry completely and then come in a, a little bit more but it's kind of like how much you want to uh, put into it but yeah, that's basically uh, how I painted uh, the moons for Moon June, the kind of the process that I ended up liking quite a bit. Um, you could paint the outside if you wanted to, or just leave it um, like that, and it makes a really nice piece. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, thank you so much again for being Patreons, being supporters uh, of my art. I really appreciate it. It helps me to keep creating, um, and it's just so fun to have you all appreciating and enjoying science art with me. So thank you. Um, and if there's ever anything you ever want to see in the future, uh, just let me know uh, and we'll see if we can work that out. Thanks.